Hi guys, I'm back in the garbage room here and it's Wednesday, so I might call this Dumpster Diving Wednesday. Doesn't really rhyme, but uh, well, I found a box of stuff in here. Look at this, just sitting here. Check this out. Genuine dictaphones. There's actually a whole box of them, along with a whole bunch of power adapters. There they are, check that out and tons of power cords and over here it looks like there's another box tons of IEC power cords which are awesome I mean even if you don't use them as uh, uh, you know regular IEC power cords I've already got a drawer full of these so I don't need any more but you take them because they're like you know they can have one square millimeter copper in them so you know excellent find and if we dig around down in here what have we got here? I have no idea what that is. That feels real heavy. Is it? I don't know. Oh, it's a it's a foot pedal. It's a foot pedal that, that you put down on the floor and you can tap it with your foot and you can play. There you go. Play, rewind, fast forward. Oh man, that's going to come in useful. And <laughs> here we go. Here's another dictaphone. This one's bigger and uh, bigger and heavier than the box full of other ones, but. There you go, it's a genuine dictaphone voice processor. What else have we got in here? Man, this is awesome. Somebody is clearly, um, you know, there's some firm or something has uh, uh, tossed out these. They're probably working because um, you wouldn't throw out, like, this many. There's no way you'd throw out this many if they were all busted. I think they just... Um, you know, either, either they've shut up shop, they've moved, or they've chosen a new uh, system which doesn't use these tapes anymore. You know, some sort of computer-based system or something. So, look at this. We've got a bag of... Oh, hello. Hello. What have we got down in here? Dict oh, I was hoping that would be a portable little dictaphone. It's not. It's just the box, but... Yeah. Look, is, it, is that another foot pedal down in there? There's a whole bunch of stuff. Awesome. What a score. I'm uh, going to have to take these and uh, well, tear them down. There might be some useful parts. They're based on the old, you know, tape-based um, system, one of those little micro-cassette recorder things. But, heck, you know, um, I don't know. It's, <laughs> they've got to be, got to have useful parts in there. There's the... Uh, there's the foot control there, and the hand mic, so you can plug the foot control in, but definitely well worth salvaging. And one of the beautiful things is, they're already in a convenient carry box. I can just pick this up and uh, take it away. Woohoo! So, what did I score from that little dumpster diving episode there? Well, check it out. I got six... Uh, looks like identical model dictaphones, genuine dictaphones. Another looks like a really older sort of, you know, maybe late 80s uh, vintage dictaphone there. I got a couple of uh, foot pedals here. These will be, you know, they, they could come in handy for um, uh, controlling stuff around the lab or remote control for the camera or something. Who knows? So there's two different types of... Uh, foot pedals there, there you go, that one you can hear the micro switches there you go, that one's uh, really quite neat and it looks like this is the older one which uh, goes with this old style one over here and um, I scored a uh, whole bunch of these, these are uh, 16 volt, 1 amp uh, linear um, uh, transformer power packs awesome, they're terrific, um, I got a about oh I don't know half at least half a dozen of these switch mode uh, power packs and here they are they're 12 volts two and a half amps awesome um, what else have we got here we've got oh they don't use look some of those don't use standard IEC uh, uh, well your regular IEC power connectors I got uh, pro probably a dozen regular IEC uh, power cords these are Actually, you know, they call them IEC, but these are actually the C14 type. The IEC 6230 standard, I think it is. Don't quote me on that. Um, lists a whole bunch of different ones. This one's 
I believe is called a C14. And these are one, let's have a look here. Does it tell us? Should tell us the size of the copper on there somewhere. Where is it? There it is. One square millimeter. So that's got decent size copper in it. Some um, I've looked at some here have only 0.75 millimeters. You can get ones with half millimeter copper. And then we've got these larger ones as well. I believe these are the uh, C20 uh, ones. They use these on like um, high end servers. They're capable of like uh, 20 amps. That one's actually a uh, feed through, um, like an, an extension cord. But I've got uh, uh, another one there, and that one uses. Where is it? Ta-da! 1.5 square millimeter copper. So even if you've got a whole bunch of these leads, as I do, I've got a whole drawer of them. Um, but still, you know, you take them and scrap them. You can cut them up, use them as big high current uh, uh, power wires and stuff. Because there is 1.5 square millimeters. Fantastic. And there's the rest of it. I did have a clean floor this morning, but now it's just filled with all this <laughs> crap again. But Hey, the cables are cables. I'm going to whack them away in the drawers. And uh, these dictaphones, hmm, you know what we say. And here's something you don't see every day. Made in Hungary. Hi to all my Hungarian listeners. I'm not sure if I have any. Um, probably got a couple, I'm sure. Um, but there you go. That foot switch, made in Hungary. And here's this modern one, and I think they still sell them. And uh, even on eBay, I, I just had a quick look, and um, some people are selling these for like a couple of hundred dollars used. Crazy. I mean, we've got volume, tone, auto backspace, and uh, tape speed there. And, you know, there's not much else on it. There's arrays, play, fast forward, and an LCD tape counter, and the micro cassette thing. I did find one Philips micro cassette tape in the box, so I don't know, maybe it's got. Uh, confidential client details or something like that. Who knows? How do you put this thing in? I don't know. Fail. Oh, there we go. There we go. On the arm. Whack it in. Boom. Hmm. Might try and power it up first. Let's see if there's anything on that. And by the way, the model we've got here is the 1740-4 Express Writer. Made in Japan. So there you go. I think that board looks conformally coated in there by the glare on it. Anyway, I'm going to power this sucker up and uh, see what we get. Here we go. On. There we go. Ta-da! There's our tape counter. Rewind. Yep, it's at the beginning. Fast forward. Yep. Sweet. Alright, play. Oh, speaker, on. Now, on either the new draft legislation or if they prefer, comma, to recycle their redundancy seminar, stop. Grant to try and lock in a date with Seamus for mid-March. Stop. Yo, we have some stuff. They've dictated some things. And Dennis remains of the view that there is no concern with his seminar running a second. Who knows what that series. is? Yuri still cannot get a response from one man to the shelf so the deep packets they're, from they're actually dictating stuff. Open brackets, we discuss in areas to investigate. There you go. Something on there. Hmm. So there you go. We have something on that, but well, that's boring as batshit. So I am not going to listen to that. Couldn't care less. But there you go. These things work. I don't know. Should I sell them on eBay? No cassette. And of course, there's only one thing we're interested in. What's inside? So let's uh, crack this thing open and see what we've got in here. As I said, I think the board looked conformally coded through there. I can see quite a sheen on it. And uh, that would be, hey, here we go. It's gonna pop open nice and easy, I suspect. Ta-da! Oh, there it is. It's inside a dictaphone. On first glance, this actually looks quite well engineered. I like it. There's, a, you know, the single top uh, front piece. We've got a little, is that a 0.2 watt or wouldn't be a 2 watt, I don't think. 0.2 watt uh, speaker there. And uh, 
Nice looking board down the bottom there. Nice looking cassette mechanism. I like it. LCD is individually screwed into there. But uh, this looks really rather neat. Hmm, gonna have to delve a bit further, get that main board out. Looks like this front button PCB here just lifts directly out via these clips. So if you lift that up, there we go. That's well engineered with the retention clips and everything there. I rather, rather like that. That's a nice bit of work. Mechanism here might come out in, well, this plastic holder might pop out in one bit or is that tied into, no, it looks like it might be tied into the metal bracket there for the tape transport mechanism. You can see the heads there and there's some useful cogs in there maybe if you're into that sort of thing. There you go, that's rather neat. I like that. And uh, no, I think it will require a bit more percussive maintenance. This is an interesting cable clamp mechanism here. It's a wire soldered onto the PCB there. There's, a, there's actually a hole for it down in there and uh, it's just bent over like that to hold down the wires. I've never seen that before. Now the LCD module is interesting. It has a large quad flat pack on the bottom. Don't know what that is, mate. It's probably some uh, custom device, but by the number of wires going to this thing, it almost makes me suspect that it's um, like a uh, self-contained thing that maybe just counts pulses up and down. And, uh, well, well, maybe. Uh, well, no, because we saw it display CAS, didn't we, for cassettes. So I'm just curious to know what that, uh, what's on that interface there as this thing, um, you know, uh, as this thing uh, plays along and uh, does stuff. Maybe. Hmm. We could probe that perhaps. Let's pop out the tape transport mechanism here. This has got a little uh, flat flex cable on it. There we go. That's what's under the bottom of it. Tiny little uh, DC motor, little pulley, cog, interface board, and the heads on the top. There's not uh, much to that at all, but that's a uh, nicely engineered little mechanism there. I like it. There we go. I've managed to lift most of it out and we've got full access to the main board now. And what this little interface board up here is, is um, that that is an optical encoder in there and that counts the pulses as this thing rotates. So that's for the tape counter because if we go down here and look at the, uh, well, down on the silk screen on the board down there, it tells you it's a real pulse. There it is, real pulse interface. So you get a pulse for each rotation or quarter rotation or something like that, um, which I don't know, might presumably go directly to that LCD module or it could be controlled by the H8 microcontroller there. Not uh, entirely sure there, it could, uh, could work either way there, but this is a rather nice board. I like it predominantly um, surface mount, the odd uh, through hole uh, power component up here, TO220, there's a glass fuse in there, there's a large radial cap, a couple of large radial caps there. But uh, apart from that, it's a, a fairly modern, fairly modern layout and design. I really think that's rather, uh, rather neat. And these pots here, these are, I don't know, are these like custom pots? I've never seen anything like that before. So they're rather unusual. They're staggered at different uh, offsets there across the board for the four uh, wiper pots on the front panel. So I don't know. Don't know what's going on there. And by the way, no, this isn't uh, conformally coded. It's just one of these high sheen uh, solder masks, um, which, you know, does at first glance, does kind of look conformally coded, but if it was con board was conformally coded, um, you'd see the coating, you know, it's actually sprayed on to the board after the conformal coating process, sprayed onto the board after the components are loaded. So you'd expect to see it all over the chips and everything, but it's not, 
So it's just the solder mask. Now this is rather interesting. This cog here, if we flip this up, sorry, uh, sorry, no, it's this, it's this cog here. So it's this one here. If we flip it up, there's actually a component of what looks like a little mysterious box component down there on the board, but it's not. It's a stuck on rubber. Um, you know, it's just, uh, you can see the gunk on the side of it there, and it's actually stopped, uh, stuck down and it's dampening the bottom of the cog there. So the bottom of that cog just uh, sits on that little spongy base on the board. And we have down in there a mysterious little single in line package. You don't see too many of those, uh, quite rare. I'm not gonna bother Googling that. I'm gonna assume um, by the, uh, type of, the uh, type of package and the ele electrolytic cap surrounding it, that that's probably the uh, power amplifier for the speaker, would be my guess. And there's a couple of adjustment pots here, one for tape speed, uh, one down in here for the uh, bias as well. That's for the tape bias level. And uh, that is about all she wrote. There's a uh, freestanding resistor there. Look at that. They've uh, had that sticking out of the board like that for power dissipation reasons. It looks like they uh, kind of uh, goofed that one in terms of the uh, footprint. And they've made a correction for that late in the, state, uh, late in the game. Uh, what else have we got? Not much else, there's not a huge amount in there. So we've got a couple of regulators. That uh, one down there is a 7805. Uh, not a huge amount extra. Mount on the heat sink, you can see the thermal compound down in there. Couple of caps, not terribly exciting. Well, no, it makes more sense for that chip there to be the uh, speaker driver, because there's the uh, speaker connector. It's an AN6607, no idea. But uh, yeah, so that little uh, uh, single in line chip, probably some little, uh, you know, uh, some, some sort of a amplification device, some sort of analog. Um, usually these are like, um, you know, an amplifiers, analog, bunch of discrete matched uh, transistor pairs or uh, something like that. So there you have it. That's a quick uh, sneak peek inside a genuine dictaphone tape recorder. And I scored Six of the buggers. What a score in my today's dumpster diving effort. I like it. And uh, this isn't a full teardown. It's not teardown Tuesday. It's dumpster diving Wednesday. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. The link's below. Catch you next time.